What's up everybody? I hope you had a great Christmas. This is a video on me buying my dad a 2002 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 for Christmas. But before I get started in that video, I just wanted to say, I know some of you are probably waiting for the content that I had previously promised on certain things, um, and it is coming. I'm working on multiple videos right now at the same time, and uh, just be patient with me. I know I promised you a video on my 08 Z06. I will be doing that. I am also going to be doing a comparison video of this car with the 0, uh, 04 Mach 1. And then I also have a video coming of my 99 Camaro that I had promised and a video that um, is going to be featuring some products that a company sent to me. And uh, that's all coming. So please be patient. Please subscribe. I'm working on all of it. I'm trying not to rush anything because I don't want to make crappy videos. So hang in there, subscribe, and you will see the videos coming that I have promised. So sometime in the early 90s, my dad picked me up from school. It was probably around 1993. And uh, at that time, he was daily driving a 68 Camaro convertible. And I said to my dad, hey, um, you know, what's your favorite car? What's the, what's the most favorite car you've ever had that you ever owned? My dad has had a lot of cars. He estimates somewhere over several hundred at this point. He has no idea, but it's definitely over that. And he says to me, my favorite car you ever had was a 67 Chevy Corvette. that He had 427 car, four speed. And uh, it was actually the second one he had. His first one was wrecked, and his second one was stolen and stripped and beat to crap. So he, um, he basically never really saw the car after they stole it. And uh, once they did sell it, shit. Naturally, I'm in the middle, <laughs> middle of making that last video and a semi-truck comes down the road. I'm parked in the middle of the road. So I try not to be too big of an a-hole and, and just stand off to the side so I don't piss anybody off because I'm pretty sure this is private property, but. Anyways, back to the story. So uh, his car was stolen, stripped. The, the kids that stole it ripped the motor out of it, dumped it into a Chevelle. It was 427. They dumped into a four-door Chevelle, and they beat my dad's car with a hammer. They did catch him. They did, uh, they did get some prison sentences over it. It was a big ordeal. And uh, basically, my dad never had another 67 Corvette after that. He's had a lot of Corvettes since then. He just never had another 67. So I told him, Pop, one day when I'm older, I will buy you a 67 Corvette. Well, when you're only about four years old, five years old, however old I was in 93, um, that's a huge promise, especially when the value of those cars has gone up somewhere, you know, 400% compared to when I said that to him. But I will promise you to this day, he has never let me forget that. So I ended up buying him this car for Christmas. It was not a 67 Corvette, but it was something that he did really want. And uh, I talked to him about it. He was eyeing this car at a car show for quite some time. And he kept telling me about it. And uh, I said, let's go check out this car and see what we can come up with. And at the time I had an 01 Trans Am that was a Sunset Orange Metallic. So I picked him up in that car and I took him to go get this. And I made a deal with the gentleman who had it and I bought it off of him. And uh, so anyway, I'm gonna go into some details about that. Earlier that year, I had bought my dad a 2002 Camaro that was actually on its way to the junkyard. Uh, older couple that was living in Fort Myers bought it brand new and then they ended up bringing it up to the Tampa area um, and they ended up having the car and they drove it from day one all the way up until around the time that I ended up purchasing it from them. So they were sending the car to the junkyard and at that time I was a middleman between people who sent their cars to the junkyard and before they got to the junkyard and I made them a cash offer on it that was higher than what the junkyard was going to pay for it and they took it. So I ended up bringing home a six cylinder 2002 all black Camaro, and I will include a picture of it if I can figure out how to do that. And uh, <clears throat> my dad ended up putting some tires on it, putting a quill pack on it, and that car ran beautifully. It actually had just around 110,000 miles on it, but it was a six cylinder, and it's not as exciting. At one point, we had talked about even taking the car apart and just going ahead and LS swapping it, which we didn't want to do because this car was actually near mint, considering the older people that had it garaged it the whole time. So we ended up putting up the car for sale and uh, some friends of ours ended up buying it for their daughter who later went off to college with it. She still drives the car to this day and uh, just this past Thanksgiving, I actually saw it at a public shopping center uh, sitting in the parking lot. 
So it was nice to see the car still on the road, but my dad's not gonna be excited with six cylinder. It was just a quick temporary car that we bought, made it a little bit nicer, decided to keep it, and then we were just gonna send it down the road. During the time that he was fixing his car up, the car that you see here in the background was actually going to the local shows that my dad frequents. My dad's retired, um, he's 80 years old, we do everything together, it's my best friend. And uh, he gets bored sitting at home all day, so he goes to car shows at nights with his buddies. And uh, locally, believe it or not, there's usually a show almost every single night. It just depends where at in Florida you want to go to to get to it. But locally, there are a lot of shows. And uh, he kept seeing this show, this car at the show, and he kept telling me about it. He kept telling me about it and said, hey, there's this orange Z28. Um, it's a really nice car. I want to buy it, you know, this and that. And I said, well you know, wait and see what happens. Maybe he'll come down on the price. He wanted nine grand for it or $9,500 for it. I told him for a Z28 at that time, it was, it just wasn't worth it. But I didn't know the car only had 57,000 miles on it either. So that's a different story. But he ended up continually bringing up the car to me and he would mention it from time to time. Well, we ended up selling that six cylinder Camaro, like I said, and I had a 94 Trans Am um, anniversary car that was actually uh, six speed black with a WS6 hood. And it was a nice car, but it was actually just not something I was planning to keep long term. I enjoyed it, I drove it, and uh, decided to go ahead and put that up for sale. So some time went by. Um, I kept uh, hearing my dad talk about the car, and I'd asked him, do you see it at the shows anymore? And for a while there, he didn't see it. So we kind of just assumed the older gentleman that had it sold it. Now the older gentleman who bought it, um, he bought it from his son who was the original owner who lived in Kentucky. And his son brought it down here for his dad to sell. And his dad said, I can sell the car easier down here because a car like this where they were at um, in Kentucky doesn't go for the kind of money that it would maybe in Florida, especially it being a T-top car and something that people are kind of interested in. So the son told his dad, sure, I'll bring the car down, visit, leave it with you and we'll just have you sell it. Dad ended up buying the car, his dad, and he kept it for a little bit and he drove it and put it up for sale. And uh, then we ended up running into him at these shows and then we didn't see him for a while. So we ended up running into him around Thanksgiving. I didn't, I shouldn't say we. My dad ended up running into him sometime around Thanksgiving at a local car show. And he still had the car, still had it for sale. And my dad's like, why don't you just call him and talk to him? Cause he, sees, he seems like he's pretty flexible on the price. He'd had it for sale for about six months and nobody had bit yet. So I said, all right, I'll do that. So I ended up giving the guy a call. I was sitting in my garage in my old house and uh, contemplating even trying to decide if I wanted to do something like this. The holidays were getting close. I really didn't have all the money in the world to be spending on a car with the holidays coming. Um, and I also had two cars I was working on at the time kind of trying to build. And I had just bought my 01 Trans Am WS6. So I was trying to sell my 94 to kind of replace some of the money that I had. So I called the guy, he answers right away, very friendly. I asked him some questions about the car. He answered me. He just didn't seem to really know a whole lot about it. He was more of a type of car guy who just liked to drive and enjoy. He told me he was selling the car because basically he wanted to put the money into a Saturn, I think it's called a Saturn Sky. Same thing as like a Pontiac Solstice, small two-seater car. He wanted to put some money towards the engine and make it a little bit quicker. And uh, he was just looking to offload this so he could do that. So I said to him, you know, when's a good time? When can we come and see it? And uh, I informed him, I said, look, I'm, I'm probably gonna be buying this car for my dad. It's not gonna be something for myself. So I gotta try and uh, see if this is something that he also wants to, I'd like for him to test drive it, make sure this is a car that he's interested in before I just lay out the money. So no, I never did surprise my dad. I never just went out and bought it and threw a cover over it and peeled it off, said here, Merry Christmas, let me make a video so I can get thousands of views. I didn't wanna do it that way. And, uh, and at the time I wasn't even making videos anyway. The guy only lived about 25, 30 minutes away from us. So it wasn't too bad of a haul to go over there and look at the car anyway. Um, I only brought a, a set amount of cash with me. And like I said, he was asking nine ninety five hundred 9,500 when I first talked to him about it. And uh, he had said, you know, he was kind of firm at the price, whatever, but he was willing to be flexible on it. I said, sure, whatever. We go over to his house, we look at the car. I tell my dad, you know, hey, this is, uh, this is a really nice car, I like it. At the time, um, the car had nothing done to it uh, other than a Flowmaster and that air lid. And uh, I said, let's go for a test drive. Let's just make sure it runs right, shifts right, everything's good. 
Now we, uh, we ended up doing that. We get back to the guy's house. I ended up making him, um, a fairly low offer. And I did that because the gentleman had told me he never, he didn't have any bites on it. He never listed it on Craigslist or anything like that. Facebook marketplace in 2016, I don't even know if that was a thing yet. I don't even know if it was, if it was, if many people were using it, but Craigslist was still a thing. And he said, no, I don't have it listed anywhere. I'm not great with computers. I don't even like doing that kind of stuff. He goes, I thought about just calling the local newspaper. Kind of made me chuckle because I don't even think about the newspaper anymore when I go to look at buying a car. But he was an older gentleman who was really nice and that was his way of selling things at one point in time. And uh, I don't even think I'll ever even catch a car in the newspaper, but he was gonna do that if it didn't end up selling. And uh, he said, basically, he didn't have any bites. He was willing to be flexible. And I told him, I said, how about this? And I made him my offer and he took it and that was it. I bought my dad that car for Christmas. We rode home together um, in my orange Trans Am and I will show pictures of that. But we rode home together, my orange Trans Am, this Camaro, and he has had it ever since. So it is a great car. It's been super dependable. Again, 57,000 original miles when we bought it. It's got 90,000 now. It was a prideful thing for me to be able to buy my dad a car. Was it a 67 Corvette? No, well, and this will never be anything compared to a 67 Corvette. But at that time, in my mid to early 20s, it was not easy. Um, I was working 80 something hours a week at that time. I was literally killing myself just to have a paycheck. And uh, I did it and I bought it for him. And just so happened, believe it or not, the very next day I ended up selling the Trans Am that I had, the uh, 94 Trans Am. So I actually ended up selling the car, the 94, with an LT1 for the same price that I ended up buying this for. And it worked out perfect, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is obviously just meant to be. And my dad's drove this ever since. things about these cars even though you don't use them they did have traction control and it says asr but it's uh labeled for basically anti-slip regulation um and then you have fog light switch here and your air controls there and your shifter Otherwise, the car is uh, near mint. It was basically purchased that way. When we first got it, there were some rock chips on the front bumper. Um, I don't know if the guy just was always tailgating rock trucks or what, but it had an insane amount of rock chips just on the front bumper. So we ended up getting that repainted. And uh, unfortunately, my dad was on his way home from a car show one day. And uh, this little spot right there and that little part of the fender there got mixed up with a deer. Uh, deer jumped right out in front of him. He couldn't avoid it. My dad hit the deer doing about 20. And that was it, no airbag deploy, no nothing crazy, but it ended up causing a little bit of damage. My dad said the deer just stood up and walked off. So naturally I was kind of upset for him because we just had the front end sprayed. It does need to be vacuumed. Um, I kind of surprised this on him and didn't say anything. I just pretty much told him, hey, I'm gonna pick up the car and take it. Uh, you can see the dash is mint in it. The um, the gauge cluster works perfect. Um, it is an automatic, like I mentioned, and uh, it is also a T-top car. The interior is near mint. The only spot I have in the seat is right there, and I hate to say it, but that's just been from us driving it. Um, it wasn't like that when we got it. So with 90, it has 90,000 miles on it now. Um, the T-tops do not leak. T-tops work great. Um, came with the little covers inside. Sometimes you'll end up buying a car with T-tops and it didn't get those covers. But um, it so far has been an awesome car. And like I mentioned, it only has a Flowmaster, nothing else. And then we put the wheels on. Um, I got a great deal on those wheels at one point. They're going to be there just temporary though. We're going to end up putting some better wheels on the car at some point. But 
those tires and wheels right there, I picked them up for like 400 bucks, I think, four, 450, somewhere in there. Um, and they had brand new tires on them. So I said, Pop, instead of buying new tires for the old wheels, the Snowflake, you know, Z28 wheels, I said, we'll just run these wheels for right now and we'll get something else later. And like I had mentioned, I put an air lid on it. Um, I don't think it actually came with the air lid. I might have said that earlier, but I do remember putting the air lid on this car. And that's it. We haven't really done anything else. Um, this car, we were going to go ahead and cam it in the whole nine yards, but he drives it so much that there just hasn't been any time for us to do that. And the car runs perfect. It shifts great. So we haven't decided to dive into the engine just yet, but at some point we will do some upgrades to the car. Um, I would like to see it with uh, with a cam and a better set of heads on there. It is an LS6 block. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but um, 01 and 02, the GM manufacturing plants got running low on LS1 and uh, LS1 blocks, and they had some LS6s left over. The LS6 block is actually a, a little bit different aluminum material that they used to make those blocks. And they actually ended up being a little bit better as far as uh, oil travel through the, the block is better. Um, they have better oil journals, so they tend to lubricate better. And uh, the, apparently from what I have read, the aluminum that they used is actually a little bit stronger, about 20% stronger than the factory LS1 block. I don't know how true that is. But I do know that it was a small percentage of them that got them because not all 01s and 02s got LS6 blocks. Now, it comes factory with an LS6 intake in 01 and 02, and that is a good upgrade. It's one of the best upgrades you can do for such a cheap price, um, and this car came with it. The 01 models, less than 17% of them got the LS6 block, and in 02, it was around 20% got the LS6 block. So not many at all for the production. In 2002, there was only 1,875 Chevrolet Camaros built with this color. So in 2002, only 4.5% of all the Camaros made came in this color. Some of the things I do like about this car that my uh, 99 Camaro Supersport did not have is the steering wheel controls. Uh, the steering wheel controls is actually pretty nice. And the fact that the car had a CD player up front was nice because my 99 Although it did have a CD player, it was like a 12 disc changer that was in the rear and it came with a cassette hookup in the front. So it wasn't the best, but it actually ended up being all right later on when you use cassettes to hook up to your smartphone and you didn't want to get rid of the original radio. Because I'm sure as you all know, CDs have pretty much just kind of died off at this point. Here's your trunk space. It's actually not bad. Um, these tires and wheels that are on this car actually fit all in the back. So. <laughs> Um, you can't tell me that it doesn't have enough room because it definitely does. And those slots you see down there are for your T-tops. But the hatch, it's big. It's a nice piece of glass. It is heavy. So you do have to replace these shocks every so often because it does hold a lot of weight. Um, but not bad trunk space. And the cool part is the rear seat does fold down. There's two levers on each side where you can just lift them up, fold the seat down. And that way you have even more room if you had to store some groceries or anything like that. cars didn't come with a lot of bells and whistles. They were pretty simple. Um, you either loved them or you hated them, I noticed. A lot of people seem to trash the 4th Gen Camaros and the Trans Ams. Why, I don't know. Especially considering the 4th Gen Trans Am was one of the prettiest cars ever made. Um, but these cars just, you either loved them or you hate them, like I said. And it could be maybe because they didn't come with a lot. But the interiors on these cars are really nice, except for this upper dash pad. The upper dash pad on these cars will crack. Um, I'm on my third one in my 99 Camaro and I have replaced it with used ones every time and over time it just cracks. The Florida sun is very brutal down here. I remember kind of complaining about that on LS1 Tech years ago and a guy told me, what are you doing throwing fat chicks on top of your dash? And I kind of, kind of made me laugh because I'm like, you don't realize it, the inside of these cars gets so hot. The whole top half of the car is glass. 
T-tops, that huge back window, your windshield, your side windows. Yes, everything can be helped with window tent, but it doesn't fix everything. The inside of one of these cars can get up to like 140 degrees in the middle of summer down here. And that plastic right there is just not going to live through that for years of it. So it's one of those things that kind of sucks. The dashes are expensive. Last I heard, GM still actually owns the uh, patent on them, so they'll never give it up. And uh, it's probably because it's a hell of a money maker for people who like to keep their cars in, in great shape. Another thing you'll hear people talk about is just the, the weakness of the 4L60E. The 4L60E is actually not a weak transmission by any means. It's actually a pretty good transmission. The problem is there's a lot of people out there who just think that things from the factory are going to take a lot of abuse once they put some power into it. And that's not the case. Um, I worked in a transmission shop for years, a performance shop, and the 4L60 is a great transmission, especially if you get somebody who really knows how to build it with high quality um, US products, not overseas Chinese knockoff products. Now I have daily drove some of these cars before and uh, I daily drove a 4th gen F body more than anything else in my life. And I will be happy to tell you that they get about 22 to 25 miles to the gallon if you keep your foot out of it all the time. And the six feet get even better fuel mileage. I have a friend who ended up doing nothing but just an air filter on his car, a K and N, and just an exhaust, and he was still getting 27, 28 miles to the gallon out of his six feet Trans Am. So, with that being said, these are great cars. They live forever. We've had no problems with this car. We did have an air compressor that ended up leaking. Mine leaked on my car, and it seems like every one that I've owned goes through the same thing. So I'm not gonna blame the car as much as I'm going to blame the fact that these cars ended up with air compressors where they just leaked. It was a natural thing for them. Kind of like the, the upper dash there. It's not, it doesn't mean the car is not reliable just because the dash broke. It's just one of those things you deal with. Every car has their great points and then they have their cons. So this is just one of those cars that has a lot of great points, but it's very basic. These cars do handle exceptionally well. You can throw these things around a corner pretty easily and they and they really hold it great. Um, if you got a Super Sport, you could get one with a little bit better suspension. GM also had a code. Oops, is that a cop? GM also had an RPO code. I think it was F4E. The F4E suspension came in my 99 Camaro. That suspension was a lot stiffer. It rode better and it handled better. The suspension that's on this is F3E, as I believe what it was, and uh, it's softer. So the rear gears in this one is actually just a 323. Um, if you got a manual transmission, you got 342 rear gears. That about sums it up. The car is definitely worth more now than what I paid for it. I'm glad I made this investment, but I don't think I'll be getting rid of the car. And it's not even my car to get rid of. Like I said, I bought it and gave it to my dad. When he's done with it, it will come back to me. And wherever I'm at in that point in my life will decide what I'm gonna do with it. But I, I will probably keep this car. And I will keep it only because of the simple fact that it's, uh, they're hard to find. And to find one in orange is even harder. And a lot of them uh, nowadays have been wrecked and some of them are rusted and this one's just in great shape. It needs a few little things, but nothing crazy. So I could daily drive this car and depend on it tomorrow if I needed to. Also, if you've ever bought a car for somebody, like your mom or your dad or anybody, tell me what it was. I'm curious, just in the comments, drop and tell me, you know, hey, this is what I bought them and the reason you bought it for them. And uh, let me know, I'm curious. I know a lot of people have done that. Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't ever catch all that on video. I think that's one of those moments that didn't need to be caught on video. We can talk about it later, it's a great story but I didn't feel the need to put my dad on camera like that doing something nice for him. That's not, that wasn't what this was about. So if you ended up buying a car for somebody, put it in the comments. I don't mean your kids and, and things like that. I mean like it was a genuine gift from you to somebody that you really cared about. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Again, my videos on my other stuff is coming. I promise you I will not skip making them. I told you I'd make Everybody had a great, great Christmas. And uh, I'm gonna get some shots of this thing with my Marauder. I don't get to drive the Marauder a lot because I, I have a work vehicle. But on the weekends, I try to take it out. So today I took it out so I could come get this and uh, make my video. So I got to drive two awesome cars today. So again, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.